Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sang Kim from Line Financial Plus. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time to attend this session. And it's a great honor to have an opportunity and to be here as a speaker and to present Line Score How to Build an Alternative Credit Score Scoring Model. Let me introduce myself briefly. I'm in charge of credit scoring and risk management team at Line Financial Plus as a manager. My team's main responsibility is to develop Line Score, an alternative credit score used for Line Financial Services, not only for Japan, but also for Thailand, Taiwan, and Indonesia. Before we get started, I would like to share one enlightening incident that happened shortly after I joined the line. Before I joined line, I was mainly in charge of developing credit scoring system at credit bureau, fintech company, and finance institutions. In the finance industry, CSS is commonly referred to the credit scoring system, and it actually means credit scoring model rather than an IT system. Across the finance companies, using the term developing CSS is a very natural and common way to express that we are building a model. However, I'm here at Line, which is a technology company with a lot of developers. Here I found that the term, the term development is used to, is used to mean application or server development, backend, frontend, so on and so forth. So when I explain that I'm in charge of developing the crash scoring system, everyone considered me as a developer that developed full stack. It means people expect me to not only develop a model, but also develop all related systems. A bit of a cultural difference, I guess. After a bit of a chaos, I was able to clear up the confusion by using the term model rather than system and build rather than develop. This is I put the title, how to build an alternative crash coding model to this session. Now, let's begin on. This session, we we'll cover the following topics in consecutive order. First, I briefly illustrate the key concept on drawing credit scoring. And further, I introduce line score as an alternative credit score. Then I'll give a general overview of what credit score is and how to build or develop the credit scoring, how to build or develop the credit scoring model. Continuing on, I explain how to measure the performance of the credit scoring model. And lastly, shall we do the key achievement of line score. To understand the main topic today, credit scoring model, I'd like to start by, start by explaining the difference between the predictive model and the credit scoring model. Then I'll introduce the concept of alternative credit scoring <laughs> credit score, such as line score, in contrast to traditional credit scores. The main difference between the predictive model and the credit score model is what you want to predict. While the predictive model may have many purposes, credit scoring model is the tool to evaluate the credit worthiness of a customer. In other words, the main purpose of the credit scoring is to predict which customer are not likely to pay back or simply predict default. Suppose you are building a model to determine which advertisements are shown to users online. What would be the most important of a consideration in this case? The biggest goal is to get the most users 
to respond to your advertisement. And if you just don't respond to the advertisement or see an advertisement that is not relevant, you won't have a huge problem. Of course, it can be a problem for advertising staffs and advertisers. Let's look at the case of crash scoring model. When a loan application is reviewed, what would, be, what would be the most important consideration? The key is not to lend a customer who is unlikely to pay back. How to lend a customer and how much we can lend are the next questions. If you give a loan to a customer who will not pay you back, you immediately lose as much as the amount of loan. Such losses immediately reflected in financial company's bottom line. Keep in mind that the building a credit scoring model is a very different task from building a generic predictive model. Let's, let's look at the subject of today's session, the difference between the building a traditional credit scoring model and an alternative credit scoring model. Traditional credit models mainly use financial data to score. The most commonly used financial data is the history of a loan and or credit card delinquencies, payment history, and so on. Therefore, it is a method that can be used in a relatively developed country where financial transaction history can systemically accumulate it manage it, and use it. Consequently, customers who do not have past financial transaction history were limited in their access to the financial services when evaluated by traditional credit scoring model. In contrast, alternative credit scoring models typically use non-financial data for scoring. Since almost everyone uses smartphone, the activity data generated from mobile platforms are available. You can now measure customers' credit worthiness even through transactions from shopping, payment history, telecommunication usage information, and SNS usage pattern. Because of its wide data availability, it can be used in almost any country, regardless of each country's financial landscape or its infrastructure. Even if a customer has no insufficient financial history, you can effectively measure customer's credit worthiness. Now, let me explain the main points about line score, which is an alternative credit score. Line score is a service launched in June of this year. We currently have more than 2 million users and offer various benefits through partnership with other services, including line parking money. Its catchphrase, in which they lie, implies that line score is not just a tool to calculate your credit score, but a tool to help people get better life experiences and expand their possibilities by actively using the score. As I mentioned earlier, line score is an alternative credit score. It is calculated by analyzing various users' behavior observed on Lines platform. I know there has been fear that some of the tech companies are recklessly using user data without people realizing that their data is being used for business. However, I'd like to emphasize at this point that in no case would, would line score be calculated without user's consent. There are two major strengths of alternative credit score, which are developed using big data. First, 
through data analysis, you can find out significant factors in evaluating users' creditworthiness and use them in scoring, which enables more accurate measurement of users' creditworthiness. Second, the LINE platform covers almost all Japanese smartphone users. Compared to any other credit score, the coverage of LINE score would be much wider. In other words, based on LINE's, LINE's big data, we can achieve more accurate credit scorings and gain much wider customer coverage than our competitors. As an, as an alternative credit score, LINE score is not just limited in its law to credit scoring. In the mid to long term, the goal is to build a LINE score platform. In addition to the big data held by LINE, we are striving to pull more data sources through external alliances. Also, we expand the scope of uses of LINE score to various business areas. By providing LINE users with practical benefits on LINE score platform, we realize a catchphrase of in niche daily life. We looked at what the alternative credit scoring model is with an example of a line score. Now let's put the gear and understand how to build a credit scoring model. To help you better understand the credit scoring model, let me explain the commonly used terminologies. Credit scoring system is a statistical model that measures credit worthiness in the future by using the historical information of a customer who applies for a loan. Two of the most representative types of credit scoring system are application scoring system and behavior scoring system. Application scoring system used to measure the credit worthiness of customers applying for loans. Behavior scoring system is a scoring model that is calculated by using data such as loan usage patterns of existing customers and is for, and is for internal customer management purposes. Next term is default. Default here is not the meaning of default value in coding. Instead, the default here means failure to meet legal obligations of a loan, which is a financial term. Generally, delinquency records of more than 60 days or more than 90 days are defined as a default. Next is the feature, which means an explanatory variable used to predict the default. Specific information that is expected to be highly related to the target will be used as a feature. When the actual model is applied, it will fed into the model as an input value to predict the default. And building or developing a credit scoring model means the process of deriving a statistical model to predict the default using the features. In other words, task of the building a credit scoring model refers to the process of deriving the most optimal algorithm to predict the probability of a default using the user's past history information as a feature. The resulting credit scoring model is a function that uses past history as an X variable and has a form of logic that predicts the future default Y. The development of a of scoring model for line parking money was a process to finding the algorithm that most accurately and stably determine the relationship between default and features which are extracted from various activity, user activity data from line platform. The model developed in this way 
A function is applied at the time of loan screening in actual financial services, such as line parking money. Through the chosen algorithm, it will tell you the possibility of a default based on the features selected at the time of model development. In traditional banks, a typical credit scoring model would use customers' past financial transactions alone and determine whether approve of a loan application. In contrast, line pocket money released in August allows for more effective screening as it will not only utilize past financial transaction history, but also you also users behavior pattern on Lines platform. So far, I have explained the meaning of Line score as an alternative credit score and the key terms and concepts relate to the building a crowd scoring model. In the following, we'll take a look at the process of building a crowd scoring model and explain in detail how the crowd scoring model is built and what should be considered in the process. The process of building a crowd scoring model can be divided into five steps. First, establish a business purpose for building a crowd scoring model. Next, define the most appro appropriate target to achieve a set business purpose. Candidate features will be created subsequently using various types of data to effectively predict the target and the most relevant features will be chosen. Using the selected feature, a model will be determined with an algorithm that best predict the target. Lastly, in order to make it easier and usable for business users at finance institutions, we'll convert the result of the model, whose output is mostly, mostly probability, into scores and grades. Let me explain each of the five steps in more details. While building a crash scoring model, the first thing we always consider in our work is to determine what kind of the crash scoring model should be, should be built to achieve a specific business purpose. Within the financial in institutions, specific business goals vary from evaluation of a loan applicant, risk management of ex existing customers, effective recovery of loan corrections, response to financial fraud, and to all the detection of risk events. Therefore, different approaches should be taken to serve each purpose adequately. Once a business purpose is established, you must set the most suitable target to make sure that the business objective can be achieved. How to set up the target is the most important process as it will set the direction of the credit scoring model. Technically, no matter how well the subsequent process is done, if the direction is not set properly, the business purpose won't be achieved. After the purpose of the model and the appropriate target is defined, it is necessary to create the subject features required to predict the target. After ob obtaining raw data, we have to create as many features as possible that highly relate to the target and are expected to have a high predictive power. And then, various selection criteria will be applied to finally determine the features to be used in the credit scoring model. After the target and feature are determined, we'll explore a number of algorithms that predict the target in the best possible way. Traditionally, applying the logistic regression algorithm has been the most common method for building crash scoring models. However, in advancing big data availability, data processing, 
and analytics capability, machine learning algorithms are also being actively used in recent years. Considering our factors, the most appropriate algorithm is applied and the model is finally determined. The final value calculated from the scoring model is usually the probability of a target event occurring. This probability value is converted to scores and grade to make it easier for business users at finance institutions and or customers to understand and interpret. Subsequently, I'll explain five steps of a model, model building process in more detail. As mentioned earlier, the most representative of models used for credit risk management is the application scoring model used for loans for loans uh, screening loan applicants and behavior scoring model used for risk management of existing loan customers. In addition, financial institutions have developed and used the credit scoring models for various other purposes. Correction scoring model is developed to collect over the amount on a loan more effectively. Fraud detection model is to proactively detect customers with highly potential for fraud. An early warning model exists for detecting and responding in advance to major risk events. Depending on its business purpose, different models should be defined build and utilize appropriately. Once you have a clear purpose for your model, you need to set up the appropriate target accordingly. Since the application scoring model and the behavior scoring models are models for predicting default possibility of a loan applicant and existing loan customers respectively, we usually set the default as a target. In other model, the target definition might be different. For example, the purpose of the correction scoring model is more effectively collect delinquent debt. Recoverability is often used as a target. Fraud detection model will be used fraud occurrences as the target. Only one model will use events laid to the credit risk as it aims to detect only, be only before an event occurs. Once the purpose and target has been determined, you need to create and select the features to predict the target. Various skills are required to effectively create features. You may need to have a lot of work experiences and a deep understanding of law data, including its social and business context. In addition, it is very important to create as many features as possible with sufficient imagination while considering the relationship with the target. Let me give you several examples of creating features. And, and the examples of this slide are based on my imagination or my, on the assumption. The first candidate is a type of mobile phone. I would anticipate that customers who use the latest and high-end smartphone have more spending power and their credit worthiness will be higher. The next one is the frequency of received or sent calls. I guess that a lot of calls received or sent could indicate active social interactions and it might be relevant to the relative, relatively high level of credit worthiness. Also, I create the ratio between the received and sent calls or messages as a candidate feature. I made an assumption that people with relatively high authority or power would have more received calls or messages than sent. And usually, People who have higher authority or power will have a relatively high level of credit worthiness. Based on this assumption, 
I suppose that people who have higher proportion of received calls or messages than sent calls and messages might be higher creditworthiness. The last one is most active hours of mobile uses. Here is my reasoning. To the office worker, there will be a general pattern in the usage of mobile phone. There might be a relatively high usage during lunch time, and usage will likely increase during rush hour. However, on the contrary, it might be very low around dawn. I guess that creditworthiness would be relatively high for the office worker because of the high chance, higher chance of having a more stable job. Based on such a theory, I expected that the user who has a usage pattern similar to that office of workers might be expected to have higher creditworthiness than others. As mentioned above, it's very important to create features to properly predict the target based on the insight and imagination with the data. Lastly, in the future creation, I explain the point to, to keep in mind when selecting the final feature from the candidates. First, calculate the information value to measure the, abil uh, the ability of feature to identify the target. The stability indicator should be checked to confirm whether they show stable predictability across segment and or time. You also need to able to create the robust models using information with various attributes coming from several different categories. Finally, check the correlation between the features to ensure high correlated features are not included more than necessary. Once the feature are selected, we'll proceed with exploring the algorithm that best predict the target. As mentioned earlier, the logistic regression algorithm has traditionally been the most popular in building credit scoring models. But recently, machine learning algorithm has been actively used Models developed through logistic regression algorithm are generally simple and easy to explain and interpret. In addition, compared to the machine learning algorithm, the model can be built with a relatively small amount of data. Models developed through machine learning algorithm, on the other hand, have relatively high com complexity and are not very descriptive, therefore often said to be black box. In order to build stable machine learning model, a sufficient volume of data must be secured, and then relatively high performance can be expected. Considering our factors, the most appropriate algorithm will be chosen, and the model is finally determined. We left with the very last step, which is scaling and calibrations. The upper value calculated through the scoring model is the probability that the target will occur. As you can easily see in the example shown on the screen, the process of converting the probability to score is scaling. And the process of further converting the converted score into a grade is called calibration. So far, we have looked at the model development process and the key considerations. In this section, I'll explain how to measure the performance of the model development. The performance of the crash scoring model is measured on the basis of stability and discrimination. The set stability index is calculated to check whether the performance from the development data set also holds up in validation data set. 
And the most common measure is the PSI indicator. Discriminative power is a quantitative in indicator of how well the target is classified statistically. And the most commonly used metrics are AURC and KS indicators. In this session, we'll take a closer look at the AURC calculation, which is a method to measure the performance of a model. AURC stands for Area Under the RC Curve. The RC curve of the developed model is shown here in blue. And the area under the blue curve is calculated by the sum of areas A and B. For those of you who, for those of you who are not familiar with the RC indicator, I will help you understand the simple example. Suppose that there are a total of 100 customers, among which there are five different customers in total. Let's suppose that the scores calculated through the developed model place these five different customers at 5th, 10th, 20th, 25th, and 30th percentile in ascending order of the scores. For comparison, the RC curve of random model, which determines the different customer at a constant rate as the total number of customers increase, will be shown here in the red dotted line. In contrast, the RC curve of a perfect model, which is shown as green line, will give the lowest score to all five different customers and hence, everyone will be placed at the 50th percentile. In the developed model, the 50th default customers is located at this point, followed by 10th, 20th, 25th, and 30th percentile. Therefore, it will make the RC curve as shown in the blue line. As a result, the AURC value of 0.85 is derived when areas A and B are added. For reference, using line score, when using line score, in addition to traditional credit scoring model using financial data, we expect to the AURC index to improve by about 20 to 40 percent compared to a traditional credit scoring model alone. Last but not least, I'll explain what you can expect from developing and using line score. First, we can offer various benefits based on line score. Line score users can now use financial services on a more reasonable basis when applying for loan through, through the line parking money. In the future, will provide more benefits in partnership with various financial and non-financial services. Line score can also increase accessibility to any, any other financial services. Users who have not pre previously had financial transactions can use financial services based on line score. Finally, we can save costs for customers. Line score is able to provide real benefits by reducing financial costs, by providing better financial services, such as more reasonable loan terms and interest rate. By developing and utilizing line score as an alternative credit score, we expect to provide significant benefit to our users and enhance line finances competitiveness in financial services. This concludes my presentation. I hope that my presentation today will help you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.